What up? It's your boy King Dow two two five coming at you with another reaction air video. So hit that like and subscribe. Become part of the kingdom. Man, it's just a black person's existence is just a hard one in America. Like we can do any old thing, any old every walking down the street while black. Oh, he a suspect. Traveling through his own car. Oh, he must be a thief. Well, how about this? Banking wild black. Body cam footage shows how trying to cash a paycheck led to handcuffs in Minnesota. Man, goddamn Minnesota. Y'all motherfuckers versus Mississippi and Alabama. Let's get to the video. Tells investigative reporter Eric Rasmussen he was racially profiled when a manager called police minutes after he walked into a u.s bank branch last year this is a story you will only see on nightcast that man joe morrow spoke with us in detail about what happened u.s bank however would not go on camera it settled with morrow after we started asking questions but we were still settled. able to obtain police body camera video of that incident that the bank does not want you to see when police got the call to a busy U.S. bank branch in Columbia Heights last year, a call for a fraudulent check and a suspect posing a threat. This is how they found 23-year-old Mississippi native Joe Morrow sitting in a chair in the bank manager's office, leaning back with his hands folded. Police blurred out branch manager John Asquith, as state law requires, because he did not want us to see or hear him in the video. Moro wanted Coward. everyone to know what happened. I just got through working like 12 hours, I think. His job at UNFI, a grocery supplier better known as Super Value in Hopkins. Closer to home, Moro stopped here in U.S. Bank in Columbia Heights to cash his paycheck for $900. Despite having an account, that simple transaction was anything but. And they was all looking at me and just staring at me. And then looking at the check and then staring at me again, I'm like, now I'm already knowing like what they think of the check fake. The manager, she, he came over and said, Joe Morrow, your check fake. And I said, what? He said, you people are always coming in here with fake checks. You people. What do you think he meant? Black people. Oh, okay. and I'm Morrow continued pleading his case with police sergeant Justin Pletcher in the room. Morrow's claim of racial profiling immediately met with this warning. Joe, I need you to calm down, first of all, okay? Don't say anything stupid, because you're just going to get arrested for it, all right? Still sitting in the chair as... Don't say nothing stupid. The sergeant held his ID and his check. Morrow insisted it was the bank who owed him an explanation. They called me to go out in front of everybody to know if it's a fake check. That ain't a fake check. I work there. We can confirm that. Two minutes later... What's the next? Joe. A second officer arrives, and the bank manager asks police to take Morrow to an adjacent office. The manager told the officer, like, can you get him out of my office? He might touch anything on my desk. I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, that's, that's when I got super mad. Like, what? I'm going to touch something on your desk. Joe. That anger only visible for a second. Joe, let's go over there, man. When he complies with officer's orders and stands up. Okay, let's make sure. A split second, Morrow says he'll never forget. And like, definitely when I got handcuffed and stuff, everybody looking like, when I'm getting out, coming out of his office, I was handcuffed, so people are looking. How does that make you feel? Like, crazy, like, like I'm a criminal or something, like, like I, I'm doing, like, something bad. Like, I'm, I actually came here with a fake check. In his report, the sergeant later wrote that Morrow flexed at John, the bank manager, in a threatening manner. I didn't threaten him. I, I got up, like, you know, in a, in a, in a like, you know. Like a, like a man. Do you have anything on you that could hurt harmful to anyone? Still handcuffed, Morrow offered more evidence of his innocence. I got the checks done near say one day. It started and all that. How many hours I worked, all that. I could have came here and shown them that. According to the police report, the bank manager said he'd received a lot of fraudulent checks using the UNFI logo. Morrow says the manager claimed he already called the company and confirmed the check was fake. So, who do we need to call? But this body camera video shows the bank manager did not actually make that critical call until after Morrow was already in handcuffs. So, it's a real... The check number's real. Morrow's employer confirmed the check was, in fact, Get out. Real. There's no question my man, he's been white. This would never happen. 
Five investigates showed the video to a community leader. Are you seeing that okay? I am. The founder of a nationally recognized implicit bias training program for police. But this is Minnesota. Hmm. This is not who we are. And University of Minnesota professor Samuel Myers Jr. In 2015, he authored this study of discriminatory practices at banks in the Twin Cities and he's focused on racial disparities in financial transactions for 35 years. I wish I could say that this was ambushed. I wish we could say that this was an outlier. Hmm. You know, that happens a lot. Myers, who is deaf, so this is it here. Watch the body camera video with us over Zoom with the assistance of captioning. We, as black people, are aware that these things happen at banks But Morrow's ordeal did not end when the handcuffs came off. So can I talk to you, man to man, real quick? Pink For more handcuffs. than 10 minutes, Morrow remained in this office. They're making fake checks with that logo on it, right? Sergeant Pletcher did most of the talking. So what the branch manager has to do is call him and make sure it's a good check. I need you to stay calm for that, okay? Because when you, when you start acting like this, it makes you look even get to that pisses people off like you're not allowed to be angry when somebody accuses you of bullshit no 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 see they always like to put that angry black man shit on us no 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 i'm saying when you start getting upset and irate that make you look guilty no nah, maybe i'm fucking mad that somebody accused me of being a scammer when I'm a hard-working motherfucking man. At a rate, it makes you look guilty. Uh, well, you're acting guilty. And so the question is, what is acting guilty? Tell me, what is acting guilty? I'm just mad. I'm sorry, but this is who I am. You blame me um, for creating the racism that he feels. Don't do anything stupid. It was another part of this exchange. Are oh, you kidding? That struck a nerve with Tyrone Terrell. So, play calm, play cool, and wait for you to be validated. Okay? Oh, my God. The former director of the St. Paul Department of Human Rights and the president of the African American Leadership Council says the sergeant's choice of words matters. Wait to be validated. That's 450 years of history of slavery. Do we got to still wait for white America to validate us? Come on. Columbia Heights police declined our request for an interview, but in a statement, Chief Lenny Austin said his department reviewed the incident and found the officer's actions were reasonable and they conducted well, themselves. Wasn't the police fault this time? You feel it's a racist thing, okay? Handle it different. Sergeant Pletcher would go on the record with us, but still sent us links to network news programs. If I'm not on the same side as my community, that I am failing them and I am failing this badge. And he was praised on national TV for how he handled a call involving a black health inspector two days after the death of George Floyd. I think we need more police officers to speak up. But Fletcher is not talking about this video that few have seen until now. There are gonna be plenty of people, I imagine, mm -hmm. who will say this officer acted admirably. He spoke calmly, he told plenty, them to plenty, calm down. Plenty of white people. I'm looking through the lens of a black man who dealt with too many of these cases. Was the flinching, so-called flinching, visible in the video? Well, I'll take you back to it. Lori Friedel is a professor at the University of South Florida. You just Florida, got up made. He ain't flinching at Impartial policing training program. I did not discern anything in the video that showed Mr. Morrow was being threatening. Um, maybe they saw things that I did not see, or maybe this could be related to one of the implicit associations that's well documented in the research. And that research shows that many of us see more threat in people of color. Fredell commended the sergeant for doing what she called a debrief with Morrow and advising him that he could file a complaint against the bank. This is very important. Well... Another case of a black man not allowed to just live his life without being accused, um, confronted, or show me your ID. Do you have a right to be here? Is this belong to you? This check fake. 
And then to have somebody say, to invalidate your feelings and say, well, when you act angry about somebody accusing you of something, it makes you look even more suspicious. Well, what the fuck? How can I be any more suspicious in your eyes than the color of my skin? This your boy King Down 225 with another reactionary video. Hit that like, subscribe, and become part of the kingdom. U.S. Bank, what the hell are you going to do about this?